Criticism of the TFSA increase started before the budget was ruled out. The Broadband Institute released a report earlier this year called Double Trouble, the case against expanding tax-free savings account. Rhys Kesselman is the author of that report and a prof at the School of Public Policy at Simon Fraser University. And I think, Rhys, it's important to note also one of the original proponents of the tax-free savings account. And in your original uh, paper, you basically said it's like having a cute, cuddly baby that grows up to be a monster. So just explain what the issue is with where the tax-free savings account is going. The issue is who benefits from expanding it from 5,500 to 10,000. And how does society and our economy benefit from that? The answer is disproportionately older Canadians and seniors who will be able to and have already shown evidence that they are simply transferring taxable financial assets in their TFSA. I mean, this is an age group that's not really in the saving stage of their lives. They're in the dis-saving stage. So it's those who have the wherewithal not your average senior, but your higher income, higher wealth senior, is able to use this essentially as a kind of tax avoidance provision. Uh, and particularly, uh, the increase in the limit is, is an issue here. Obviously, measuring the cost of this is hard because what we're talking about here, uh, we're talking about capital gains. So they're all notional. They could be zero, or they could be, you know, nine thousand on every account. We just don't know how much the money that is. But it's the growth in the investment that the government is missing the taxes on. When you we've seen various estimates for how big that'll get. Uh, you know, when the finance minister says 2080, when you go that far, you know, if I, I'm investing in a TFSA today, I won't touch it until I retire. So let's say that's 20, 25 years. Uh, the growth in that amount, if you aggregate it over all Canadians, how big are the numbers? The numbers are quite big and well before 2080, even by mid-century, which maybe uh, the current government is not worried about, but it is kicking the can down the road. And we talk about fiscal responsibility and caring about our children and their, grand and their children, our grandchildren. Uh, this is not really responsible fiscal policy. The numbers that others have come up with uh, the uh, Parliamentary Budget Office, uh, other academics who have looked at it, suggest uh, it could be on the order of $15 billion a year, split about two-thirds to the federal government and another $5 billion missing from the provincial treasuries. And here we're talking more um, 30, 40 years down the road. Uh, and the problem is it grows slowly, this revenue loss. It grows slowly. And, but it grows unavoidably and becomes very large over time. So to the finance minister's point, uh, let's just say I get to be whatever it is, 65, 70, and I've got all of this uh, accumulated wealth inside my TFSA. It's not going to be taxable. That's wonderful for me, by the way. I'm, I'm, I certainly would appreciate that. The government of the day, will they look around? Is it, is it politically feasible that they'll t turn around and say, you know what, Amanda, we are going to tax you on that. We've changed our mind. Is there any way to avoid that, uh, that eventuality? Uh, I can't speak about future governments. Sure, it is possible. This has happened in other countries in somewhat analogous situations. And you, or let's say someone starting in their early 20s, saving assiduously, even with the $5,500 limit, putting it into equities, uh, investing pretty smartly, could accumulate in today's dollars at the time they retire in their late 60s, uh, three quarters of a million, a million, even a million and a half dollars in today's dollars. So that's a lot of money missing from our income tax base. And certainly it should be a concern today. Is it fair to say, to characterize this as uh, a, not unlike the cut in the GST, a structural reduction in the size of the government? In other words, you're structurally changing the amount of revenue that future government gets. I think that is an accurate way to portray it. And of course, the current government tending toward a preference for smaller or at least a less growth in government uh, is philosophically attuned to that. And they would like to lock it in in a way that future governments of possibly different political parties might find difficult to reverse. However, when, when we are locked into perhaps the TFSA with a higher limit, or perhaps not. But what that means is future governments needing the revenue to finance highways, our 
criminal justice system, defense, our health care system, which is going to have growing needs, is going to ha have to tax more heavily labor earnings, wages and salaries and fringe benefits, since it won't be able to get its hands on as much of the capital and investment income. So, Reese, one of the uh, underpinnings of the growing income inequality, uh, the wealth inequity in the world that has been identified is the fact that the wealthy are able to shelter their investment gains from taxes. Uh, is there justice in, tr in allowing the less wealthy to shelter their investment gains as well, or are we just actually compounding a problem that we've already identified? Investment gains aren't being taxed the way they need to be. I think we are compounding the problem by raising the limit. The TFSAs already, with their current $5,500 limit, or current before yesterday, were disproportionately being used by higher wealth people, putting in larger amounts and saving larger amounts of money. And we can see over time, the, at least the data for the first four years, 2009 to 2012, which we now have in hand, that individuals maxing out their cumulative limit with the $5,500 figure, uh, very few young adults were maxing out their, their, their limits, uh, probably less than 10, fewer than 10 percent of them, whereas among seniors, uh, more like 40 odd percent were. And I think we've got to keep in mind, although the TFSA is advertised as something for every Canadian, three out of five Canadians over age 18 who are eligible to open an account, three out of five have not even opened one. And of the other two out of five who have opened one, rather few, except for older workers and seniors, have actually used the maximum allowed with the $5,500 limit. So we can imagine who is going to be able to take advantage of the additional $4,500 per year. Not many people. All right. We've got to leave it there, Reese. We appreciate your time today. Thank you. Reese Kesselman is a research fellow, among other things, at the Broadband Institute. Coming up next, the